Hey guys, I'm Hannah Cox with Ace Politics here in the only piece of hot pink clothing I own to talk about Barbie. As a less than avid moviegoer, someone who had only a marginal attachment to my Barbies in childhood, and as a woman who never actually feels quite comfortable wearing pink, I seriously didn't think I'd see this movie. But the perpetual wedgie it seemed to give some male conservative commentators piqued my interest, so I went. What the f Run. If you haven't seen it by now, what's wrong with you? And spoilers ahead. Film opens in the matriarchal world of Barbie land. It is a Pepto-Bismol plastic playground and the Barbies are thriving. In Barbie land, the women hold all positions of power and the Ken dolls are really more than decorative props. Kens are portrayed as weak, vapid, and desperate for the attention of the Barbies who only pay them a passing interest. Oh, looks like this beach was a little too much beach for you, Ken. If I wasn't severely injured, I would beat you off right now, Ken. I'll beat you off with you any day, Ken. Hold my ice cream, Ken. All right, Ken, you're on. Let's beat you off. As the movie says at the beginning, Barbie has a great day every day, but Ken only has a great day when Barbie looks at him. Oof. Barbie spends her days attending ceremonies for her friends' achievements, hosting dance parties. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Ken. Indulging in girls' night. While Ken, on the other hand, mostly seems to wait at the beach for Barbie to show up, begs for an invite to her party, and gets rejected when he tries to stay the night at her dream house. And as I said about those male conservative commentators, many of them were deeply triggered by this world. However, that's kind of the whole point. The world is supposed to make you uncomfortable. It's supposed to be a portrayal of what it feels like to be a woman in a man's world with the roles reversed. And I think the point many of the creators and actors were trying to say in the film is that this is what it feels like to be a woman in a man's world and it doesn't feel good. And I have to admit, in watching this, I strongly identified with that. While equality has been achieved legally for women, I do think most of us still feel like we're operating in a man's world of endless choices. It's women who spend their days waiting to see if the man of their interest texts them. It's women who plan their weekends and evenings around what their male partner wants to do. And it's women who are still judged by whether or not we have a man in our life, if we choose to procreate with them, at what age we choose to do so. No matter how many gains we've made professionally, it does still feel to most women that we are defined by the presence of men or lack thereof in our lives. So to see a world where those roles were reversed was fascinating to me and to many other people. And as you might suspect, the kins aren't faring so well in it. They lack agency, they're emotional, they're highly competitive with one another, and they spend their days in aimless pursuit of women's attention instead of going out and building something for themselves. But again, that's the point. As my friend Stephen Kent wrote for Base Politics, this movie plays squarely within a classic battle of the sexes narrative, which correctly suggests that society has historically been ordered around the preferences of men, that it could also be ordered to match the preferences of women, and that neither of these arrangements is ideal. Ultimately, the movie goes on to explore Barbie's entrance into a patriarchal world, aka the real world, where Kim becomes attracted to a more masculine hierarchy that he then goes and tries to implement back home. This similarly does not work well for the Barbies, leading to an existential crisis for stereotypical Barbie, Margot Robbie's character, where she must confront many of the issues women have faced throughout history in the real world. And this is beautifully summarized by an epic monologue America Ferreira's character delivers. The whole thing honestly had me in tears. I couldn't believe I was crying in a movie as a grown adult. Quite embarrassing, but it was what it was. But it ends with this. She says, I'm just so tired of watching myself and every single woman I know tie herself into knots so that people will like us. And if all of that is true for a doll, just representing women, then I don't even know. The truth is, it's hard being a woman, even in a post-equality world. Women are told that they can achieve and be anything, but then they're criticized for believing it. We're told we shouldn't act like men, but then we aren't taken seriously if we present as excessively feminine. We're told not to build our lives around a man, and then we're blamed when men are lonely. At the end of the day, I don't think most women feel like they're thriving. We feel like we're damned if we do, and we're damned if we don't, and we're criticized just for trying to be humans in the world. So after her existential crisis is cured by America Ferreira's pro-woman monologue, Barbies plot to take back their kingdom from the Kins and their patriarchy, and they succeed in doing just that. And to be honest, this is kind of where I expected the film to leave it, right? I think that's where a lot of third and fourth wave feminists would leave the storyline. Women rule, men drool, send the kids back to the beach to suffer for all the pain they put the Barbies through. But that's what makes this film exceptional. They don't leave it there. 
like true feminists, which means being concerned with the equality and well-being of both genders, the film actually addresses the need for both men and women to find their own identity. Barbie recognizes that it doesn't feel good when either gender tries to dominate the other one, and instead, she encourages Ken to find an identity separate from her and separate from all of his male possessions he's acquired to try to peacock his manliness under the patriarchy. And then she goes and tries to find her own identity too. I thought this film was a slam dunk. It was deeply thought-provoking, very, very funny, and even somehow healing. I left feeling more pride in being a woman, more authentic in my femininity than I have in ages. I even got my nails painted hot pink. Who am I? I liked the film so much and I couldn't stop thinking about it. So I was desperate to take my boyfriend to see it again. I wanted his thoughts and I was eager to have a discussion with him. So went we did. He also loved the film, but what he said to me right after we left the theater really surprised me. He said they did a really good job of representing what it feels like to be a man, especially in the dating world these days. And I was flabbergasted because I was like, no, no, no. At the beginning of the movie, in the matriarchal world, you're, you're supposed to understand what it's like to be a woman in the dating world. That's what it feels like to be a woman. The, that's how the roles are reversed out here. And he was like, no, like it already, it already does feel like that in the dating world. That's how I felt most of my life. But as I sat with what he said, I really started to see things from his perspective. Because it is women who are constantly told that they shouldn't put a man before their own interest. It's women who are celebrated when they pursue that advice. So it makes sense that the message most men are getting lately is that they are not needed or wanted. And what's most devastating about all of that is I think we're all playing one gigantic Olympic sport game of chicken, of pretending who can care or need each other less. And meanwhile, we're all actually suffering. And as much as women are struggling to find their footing in a post-equality world and figure out what their identity is, what they should be, what femininity looks like in 2023, I think all evidence points to the fact that men are also struggling. From the loneliness epidemic, to a skyrocketing porn addiction, to growing rates of male sexlessness, to video gaming for crazy amounts of hours a day instead of wealth creation, I think it would be hard to argue that men are thriving right now either. And that's why I like this film so much, because it struck at something that I find myself thinking about a lot, which is now that we're in a post-equality world where women have to want men versus need them, and we're also, we're no longer confined to stereotypical definitions of what it means to be a woman or a man, how do we figure out what our identities are, and how do we find ways for men and women to be compatible, to meet each other's expectations, to build relationships under this new dichotomy? We do have an equal playing field now. Despite what many on the left will tell you, women are paid the same amounts of men, and in fact, they're often dwarfing them in financial achievements. Women are actually surpassing men when it comes to the rate in which they're obtaining college degrees, in home ownership, and even catching or exceeding their partners when it comes to income in many cases. Reportedly, in almost half of opposite sex marriages in the US, women are now earning the same as their husbands or out earning them by an average of $53,000. But all that success has not made romantic partnerships easier. In fact, marriages where the woman makes more are 50% more likely to end in divorce, and they're more likely to see the man cheat, which I think is one of many indicators that men's egos largely cannot tolerate being outperformed by a woman. On top of that, in homes where women are now doing equal shares of the labor outside of the home, they're still expected to do the bulk of the domestic labor inside the home as well as most of the child rearing work, which is just unsustainable for anybody to actually adequately do. And I think that's one of many reasons you see so many women filing for divorce or choosing to forego marriage and children altogether. While Twitter is by no means indicative of the entire male population, thank God most men in real life are actually quite lovely. I like the vast majority of them that I meet. There is a very online segment of the male population that is having a very hard time coming to grasp with equality. It isn't hard at all to find men on spaces like Twitter or TikTok arguing that women should no longer have the right to vote, shouldn't be able to be in the workforce, that no-fault divorce should be outlawed, so they can trap you in their marriages? Or even that men should turn to mail order brides, literally shopping for women in war-torn impoverished countries where they don't have as many rights because they don't want to have to compete with women on an equal playing field. Additionally, everywhere you look online, you will find men claiming that they do not care about a woman's achievement or her career or her education. They'll say that women should stop pursuing things that men should care about. And to me, this seems like an obvious attempt to undermine the fact that women are largely outperforming them in these areas. But additionally, I don't really know what their point is in saying this. Do you think that women are going to say, 
I can't attract these sexist men because I have such a good job and make so much money. So I better give it up and submit myself to him and become dependent on him and throw everything away. How do you, how did you think this was going to play out? No, no woman of merit wants to be with a man who only sees her as a breeding machine or sexual object. And that is essentially what you're saying. If you're saying you don't care about a woman's education, you're saying you don't care about her mind, her goals, her passions. If you're saying you don't care about her career, you don't care about her work ethic, her purpose, it's extremely unattractive. But these men quite openly do not want to have to compete with women. That's what is at the base of all of this. They don't want to live in a world where women's opinions carry as much weight as their own, where females can push back and question them, where they aren't treated like masters of the universe simply for existing and actually have to become something of value to earn a favorable position in society, or where they have to actually acquire the skills and the character traits that are attractive to women in order to get a partner. Instead of accepting that the rules of the game have changed and evolving to embody the characteristics they would need to actually woo women in this new landscape, some of these men want to come in and undo the gains feminism have made and re-implement patriarchy, just like Ken in the movie. Evolution dictates that those who cannot adapt to change will go extinct, and after seeing some of these really disgusting sexist tweets online, I can't argue that some of these bloodlines shouldn't go extinct. But what happens in the meantime is still consequential to those of us living now, those of us trying to have relationships and families now. And the honest truth is, is that when men aren't thriving, neither are women. Women may opt out of marriage and childhood when they don't have enough eligible suitors in the market to pick from, but it's hard to argue that that's immaterial. Women who want to have children and have them have happy and healthy childhoods need a two-partner home. And for many, marriage also offers extra financial benefits, support, stability, and even greater records of success. Humans are meant for connection and community, and romantic relationships can be an amazing way to fulfill both of those needs. In order for that to happen, both genders need to thrive. Both genders need to figure out their identities in a post-equality world, as well as ways men and women can meet one another's needs in a world where women have agency and where they have to want to be with men versus need to be with them. Barbie confronted these conundrums and questions head on, and she didn't send Ken back to the beach to suffer when she could have. Similarly, I think women have achieved equality, but if we want to achieve a better world, we have to care about men finding their footing in a post-equality world too. 